Welcome to your sightings. I'm Tim White. After our recent report on a UFO encounter and group contact in rural Zimbabwe, many sightings viewers wrote in requesting additional information about this historic incident. And as Carl Wohl tells us in this extended report, the Rua encounter was only the first in a series of ongoing UFO sightings. Rua, it seems, is Earth's newest paranormal hotspot. Rua is a small agricultural community in Zimbabwe's bush country, now the focus of UFO research because sightings are definitely on the rise in this part of Africa. The sightings have increased. It has now come to the stage that I do not think a day goes by without some sightings. So I think half of the sightings that we have are genuine, and um, the balance would be attributed to things like meteorites, natural phenomenon, that sort of thing. But at least half the sightings reports that we get are definitely genuine. This string of UFO activity began with a group encounter that occurred in this field next to the Ariel Primary School in Rua in September of 1994. 62 school children claimed that a UFO had landed and that they saw alien beings emerge from the spacecraft. All I saw was a, a silver flash, just like that. And I saw a few space, I saw the bigger one, and the space had like four or five of them, like crowding around it. They were very still, and then I saw them also disappear. They went about a meter off the ground and then they just vanished. We ran down to the teachers and we went into the office and we started telling the teachers and then they said maybe there's nothing. But the children started drawing pictures, creating in pencil and crayon a disturbing portrait of extraterrestrial contact. Definitely not a human. He had a big head and big black eyes and was dressed in a black body suit. And he had, his, his eyes were down here and he was like looking really, really funny. And these eyes, the children tell us, conveyed a telepathic message, a frightening warning about Earth's destruction. I think they're trying to tell us something which is going to happen, and other people don't actually believe us sometimes. So maybe they are trying to show us something. Thanks to welcome Cynthia Hine from Africa. Thank you very much. No one knows the story of the Rua group sighting better than researcher Cynthia Hind. At a recent international UFO congress in England, Hind held ufologists spellbound at the stories of the Rua school children. I believe they, I believe they saw what they said they saw. Small details that I saw in the drawings which were incredible. Hind is a respected African journalist who covered the Rua encounter for the BBC. What she finds most convincing about the story is the fact that not one of the 62 children has changed his or her version of what happened since the event first occurred in 1994. This despite the community's strict punishment for lying. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They're afraid of the headmaster. There's no doubt about it at all. He's one of the people that still came children if they're naughty, says he believes in discipline. And he said, I'm not a believer, but he said, I can tell you one thing, children would never lie to me. But not everyone who studied the Rua group sighting believes the children's story. It's not a question of whether they're lying or not, okay? It's a question of their, there's a distinction between reality and not reality may not be as sharp as that of an older kid or an older, or an adult person. Professor John Saliba teaches comparative religion and has researched many claims of extraterrestrial contact, discounting them all. Another thing which kind of struck me is here are these crafts coming down, presumably making lots of noise, and none of the adults ventures out to see why there's such a noise taking place. We were all actually in the middle of a staff meeting in the staff room. Uh, so there was no teacher actually outside at that point in time. They must have been discussing some very important topics at the meeting there they were having. So that's kind of the uh, thing that struck me. I still don't understand how you could get 62 kids to come up with the exact same story. I think kids knew about flying saucers. The way they drew the flying saucer and the so-called people who came out of it. Now those are pictures you'll find in TV programs, uh, movies. Well, a lot of these children don't go to the movies. They live in the country, parents are farmers. I believe them uh, because normally children don't lie about things like that. 
And we always joke because the children always say, well, these little green men come out. And they say, no, mommy, but we did see. But I am sure that they personally are convinced that they saw something and it was something not part of nature. Well, I'm, kind of, uh, I'm one of those uh, people who like to see with my own eyes. Okay. So it, essentially there's nothing that you could hear from the children that would convince you? I mean, I, I have to admit, I, you, know, you have all these stories of flying saucers for the last 40 years, and uh, I can't understand their goals while they're here. I don't know what they're doing. They're wasting their time. They're going around in circles, talking to a few people who are insignificant. But Hein does not view the children or the events that they claim to have witnessed as insignificant. Her proof is a question that haunts everyone who has investigated the Rua sighting. Why would 62 children lie? And because there have been hundreds of additional sightings since then throughout South Central Africa, more people are trusting in the children. But the children can't lie, they tell the truth.